brings us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess we have sins. We have heard our community. We have squandered your blessings. We have ordered your bounty. We have failed to honor. We have lacked the courage to see. We have swallowed the falsity. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers a boundless, boundless grace when we fail. Thank the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 first lesson is from the 55, 55th chapter of Isaiah. Eat and drink that which truly satisfies. Isaiah 55, verses 1 through 5. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy. Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, 
and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is from the ninth chapter of Romans, the glory of God's people Israel. Romans 9, verses 1 through 5. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all. God bless forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Now when Jesus heard the, about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. And when he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves <clears throat> and two fish. And Jesus said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples um, to give to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for this morning. We give you thanks that you always provide for us in whatever way is necessary. Lord, touch my heart and my mind today that this word that is proclaimed is good for your people. And bless your people who will hear that they will understand. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the most difficult parts about being on a team, especially as a teenager, is sitting on the bench. 
being a bench warmer is never the place you want to be. Always enjoyed being on the team. Always enjoyed being part of the action. But I hated sitting on the bench. Not only was the bench hard, but it was hard watching everybody else play while I tried to stay focused. My coaches told me that I need to keep myself mentally prepared just in case that time comes when I get into the game. They encouraged me to pay attention because at any moment, I might need to go in and play. And I need to know what's going on in the game if I'm going into that game. But it's hard being a bench warmer. Most of us do not join a team just to sit by and watch. None of us wants to sit on the bench. Our goal is to make the team. And then once we make the team, to be in the lineup. We don't like sitting on the sidelines, but that too is being part of the team. Every team needs those who are on the sidelines, those who are on the bench, those who are ready. For me, being on the bench usually meant that there were others who were older than me and more experienced than me that got to play the game. Maybe they were even better than me, which I hated to admit. But I needed to grow, to allow those experiences on the bench to teach me what it meant to be part of a team, even that part of the team. I needed to allow the experience to help me grow in my abilities. I needed to permit coaches to lead me so that I would eventually be in the lineup and at the start and part of the game. Many parts of our lives include learning and growing. We must learn and grow before we can be part of any ministry or in any job in our society. In the church, we must hear the instruction of Jesus before we become contributing members of that church or of the body of Christ. We must sit by and learn before we can get into the game. Our Lord's disciples were often on the sidelines watching, watching Jesus as he did the things that he did. The preaching and the teaching and the healing and the ministry, they often watched as he did those things and they were to learn from Jesus all those things. And the same is true in this story of the feeding of the 5,000. Matthew tells it this way. When it was evening, the disciples came to Jesus and said, this is a deserted place. The hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. As we read from Matthew 14 this morning, we hear that John the Baptist has been executed in prison at the hands of Herod. Our Lord is grieving the death of his cousin and his colleague in ministry. Jesus sought a place, a place out of the way, a place set aside so he might grieve that loss. He wanted a place to remember his cousin, to remember the ministry they had done together. It could be that Jesus wanted a time to think about easier times and younger times, times maybe when John and Jesus were together that aren't told about in the scriptures, at family gatherings, at times when they were just together, sometimes our cousins are the, most, the first friends we ever have. The scriptures don't tell us about their childhood, but could it be that they were together quite often, maybe not so often like our families are these days? But Jesus needed a place to remember, a place to grieve. But as was always the case with Jesus, there were those who were there in need. There were people that were hurting with a variety of ailments, were wandering in a variety of ways, and they needed a master, a shepherd. 
Jesus had needs. And there are real needs, needs that you and I know about. But our Lord ministered to those that came to him with needs and with their concerns. The disciples knew that Jesus wanted the time away, that he needed a time away. They knew about his grieving the death of John. So they tried to shelter Jesus from the crowds to keep him away from those crowds. But Jesus insisted, insisted on ministering to those in need, those that had needs and concerns in that crowd. We're not told how long Jesus was out there, how long he ministered to the people that were there. But we are told in this story that the hour was growing late. Maybe it was toward evening and maybe getting dark. And the disciples saw their chance to get Jesus away. They saw their chance to minister to Jesus in the way he needed to be ministered to himself. If people in the crowd were hungry, they would surely go buy themselves something to eat. <coughs> Jesus, send the crowds away. Jesus, let them go and buy food for themselves. Jesus, think about yourself for once. Think about your own needs in your own life. Jesus, send them away. Nobody would care. Nobody would question that. And nobody would blame Jesus for that. And don't we know that it makes sense that Jesus would send people away? When they left the place they were in, they did not expect to meet a crowd. When the disciples and Jesus went across the lake, didn't expect to need to provide a meal for so many people or anybody. They did not expect to need an abundance of food. The intent of Jesus is the disciples were to go to a deserted place. To be alone where five loaves and two fish might have been enough. Sending the crowds away seemed like the smart thing to do. You and I might think that way. We might plan our visiting times either before a meal or after a meal, not to show up at dinner time at somebody's house. So we might avoid meal times. We might provide coffee and cookies, but certainly we'd not be expected to provide a meal. And we certainly would not think to serve meals for our guests who come unannounced. Send them away, Jesus. Let them fend for themselves. But Jesus said to, to the disciples, they don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing but five loaves and two fish. And Jesus said, bring them here to me. You want us to do what? Jesus, we are not prepared. We don't have enough. We are not ready. But Jesus was prepared. He was prepared to continue to care for the people in need of a shepherd. He was ready to feed the hungry and continue to heal those who were sick and those that had other needs. And it was time now for the disciples to get off the bench and into the game. They had sat on the outside long enough. They had learned enough. They had seen enough. Certainly not all they would need to know and all the things they would need to understand. But they had seen enough. And now was their time to get into the game. It is a great feeling and an uncomfortable feeling at the same time when the coach tells you to go into the game and pinch hit. You always wanted to be in the game. You always wanted to be the hero of the game and now you have your chance. Your task is to do something good. 
You're in the game. And your coach wants you to make a difference in that game. You are in the game because the coach believes you have abilities. You have the ability to make a difference. The coach believes you can get a hit or make that play in the field. It is a great feeling to be given that chance. But it's also uncomfortable because what if I strike out? What if I miss that fly ball? Or if that grounder goes through my legs? In all embarrassment. Since the coach sent you into the game, you can no longer sit on the bench. None of us was meant to stay on the bench, but all of us were meant to be in the game. Jesus sent his disciples to feed those that had gathered. Their solution was, send them away. Let them buy food for themselves. But Jesus would not do that. He would not send them away. He would not say, go take care of yourself. He called the disciples to get off the bench, to get busy, to make a difference. Why did Jesus do that? Because Jesus knew they could be successful. Our Lord knew them. Our Lord called them. Our Lord appointed them for a time of ministry like this. They needed to feed the 5,000 men plus women and children. Those disciples needed to tend to those who were in need. They learned from Jesus what was right. Our Lord taught them about ministry taught them about being servants, that those that would be great would be the servants of all, those who would be first would be last. He taught them how to be disciples. Now is their time to make a difference in the lives of those who had gathered, those that may not remember, those that may not appreciate it, those that might waste food. You and I, are called to get off the bench. Our Lord sends us out to serve. We have been at church. We've been educated, and we know the ways of Jesus. We know what our Lord will call us to do, and sometimes it's uncomfortable because we've never done that before. But our Lord sends us out. Our Lord never intended us to stay idle, but to always serve the Lord. As our God gives us ability and opportunity Jesus did not intend for us to sit on the sidelines forever just until we've had enough instruction. <coughs> you might think you don't have gifts to serve the Lord. You might only have five loaves and two fish, but Jesus says that is enough. Bring those gifts to me. You want to have a little bit of talent? Jesus says, bring it to me. You want to have a little bit of ability to speak? Bring it to me. Because the Lord says it is enough. He asks us to bring what we have, even though we think it is too little. The Lord, nothing is too, too small. There is always enough. And there's always some left over. With those loaves and fish, Jesus fed a multitude. Our Lord does the same with our gifts, the gifts that are gathered in the church, the gifts that are gathered in the body of Christ. You've been sent into the game. Jesus sent you to make a difference in at least one person's life. But could it be that our Lord sent you out to make a difference for 5,000 plus men and women and children. I do not know whose life will be impacted by your ministry, but God does. And God is sending you. It might mean making a phone call. It might be foreign to some, but it might be the same as writing a letter or a text message or an email. It might mean something else. 
the Lord is sending you to serve. You no longer sit on the bench. Why not? Because you were sent to serve the Lord. Amen. Please stand. Let's proclaim our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified by the Holy He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord God, we give thanks that you have set us apart. You set us apart to provide whatever we have to share. Lord, well, thank you that whatever we give you, you, that it is enough for you. Let us not be afraid to serve you and, and to give our loaves and fishes. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And Lord, we pray for those who are elected to office, those who are entrusted with responsibilities to care and serve your people. Lord, guide them, let your spirit move them, that they'll make decisions that are pleasing to you, that are good for your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the sick among us, those who are hurting, those who are, who are seeking in your direction, those who are mourning, and those that just need to understand. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, who the prayers of the people spoke aloud from the quiet places in our hearts. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all our things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation, and multiply your graciousness in us, that the world may be fed through love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We will give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. The Lord Jesus, on the night of the truth, we pray for your bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take me, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, at the supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, he gave for all the drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and strengthen you with the of the Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for the rich present we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity to all the world. Through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord will find you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.